Hello again, this is Nate Adenusi. Let's talk about my short-lived series, The Adventures of Omni and Javier. For those unaware, this was a show I created in July 2019, started working on the same month, and premiered on July 4th, 2020. The series was about the adventures of me and my friend Javier Corona Lopez. Whenever we got into problems, we worked together to solve them. The main side characters of the show were Emma Iverson and Justin Iverson, two of our friends and two of the three children in the Iverson family, consisting of characters from Powtoon's character family, The Office. Emma's best friends are Emily and Ruby, Justin's best friends are Joshua and Connor, and his girlfriend is Suzanne Erickson. All nine of these characters are part of a group called Extraordinine. Other characters included Julie Iverson, Michael Iverson, Cody Iverson, Joseph, Jonathan Ashad, Kretu Adriana, Annie Browski, Susan Wilson, and Mila Ward. These three are the stars of a fictional series called Tween Girl in the Monster World and are parodies of Anne Boonchoy, Sasha Waybright, and Marcy Wu from Disney Channel's Amphibia, which Tween Girl in the Monster World is a parody of. Many characters were created on a now defunct character creation website Peanutize Me, which now redirects to Disney's website. The show was cut short after only 13 episodes in response to criticisms of its quality. It had some cringeworthy moments like Emma, Justin, and their friends staring and waving to the audience for the majority they were on screen as they were intended for presentations, Arian talking about Baldi from Baldi's Basics and screaming on a couch in the rating contest, <laughs> and Justin following Suzanne with a heart hovering over him while still waving to the audience in the crush. One user left a comment on the original upload of the episode Backyard Roller Coaster wondering what the heck it was and another commented on the Game Hall episode a few days before it premiered saying that the show was cringe. In October 2020, a UTTP user came to YouTube and cyberbullied people, including me. I then found out on December 1st that it was because he hated my show. Three days later, I made every episode related to the show that I had uploaded up to that point private. I continued to work on the show until December 15th when it was finally cancelled. On July 2nd, 2019, I made a new video revealing the logo for the show. The show was inspired by videos from users Kretu, Adriana, and Glitter Rainbow Sparkle. Kretu made a series called The Lex and Kretu Show, while Glitter made a series called Timmy and Kenny. The Adventures of Omni and Javier was my second attempt at creating a series after Super Mario the Series. I began production the same day, starting with the first episode, Movie Mania. In this episode, Javier and I sneak to Walmart to get more popcorn for our upcoming movie night. The day before, I had made my final trailer reaction video to the second trailer for Spies in Disguise. That's probably the right amount. <laughs> Still go back to work. Walmart didn't allow any underage person to come into their stores without a parent or guardian, which to my knowledge probably isn't really a rule they enforce in real life. So I disguised myself as a man, not by putting some fake mustache under my nose, but by wearing a long brown rectangle <coughs> coat and standing on top of Javier. There are two versions of this episode, an alternate version that I exported through Clipcham in 2019 and the final version. One difference in the 2019 version is that two TVs in Walmart can be seen playing the movie Wonder Park. Now at this time this episode was in production, I had recently watched the movie for the first time. After missing the movie in theaters, I finally watched it on June 22nd. The final version removes the TVs. Then, of course, our cover is blown and we're chased after by two Walmart employees as if they can't call security or anything. After escaping on my now rocket powered bike, we get arrested by the police and incarcerated for one day for going to Walmart without an accompanying parent or guardian. We get grounded by our parents for a week and delay our movie night by one week. I didn't even take the time to elaborate on setting out the cast of the show, so Julie Iverson, Emma and Justin's mother, appears as one of the employees who chase after us, voiced by text-to-speech voice Amy. I actually conceived most of the characters in the show in 2020. Songs are also used in the episode, including Happier by Marshmello and Freedom by Pitbull. The show also used tracks composed for the movie Megamind, one for the beginning of the first episode and another for the show's end credits. Keep in mind that this was back when, when I used to like the movie. After completing Movie Mania, I started working on episode 2, The Rating Contest. 
In this episode, we compete against Aryan and Shane, aka Darkstorm SSR Productions, to get the highest number of likes on our videos and win Yogurtland coupons. My hobbies are drawing, gotcha, watching TV, video games, animating, eating, and sleeping QWQ. I'm totally going to win. Like Movie Mania, there were two versions of the episode, an alternate version and the final version. While re-uploading episodes in 2022, I did not re-upload the rating contest, not because the episode was deleted from Powtoon, but because it was too cringy for me to put back up on YouTube. This episode is a blatant ripoff of the Total Drama Rama episode, Toys Will Be Toys, even going as far as to copy nearly all of the dialogue word for word. Not a very exciting video. We're gonna need more balloons. And, uh, 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 and action. Not a very exciting video. We're gonna need more balloons. Keep up the good work, boys! Disappointment high five? There will be no high fives until we make a video that gets more likes than them. Come on! Keep up the good work, Omoni Yi and Javier. Disappointment high five. There will be no high fives until we make a video that gets more likes than them. Come on. You're gonna do a flip? No. You're gonna chew gum? Nope, nope. But I'm wearing my shoes! You're gonna do a flip? No. Are you gonna chew gum? No, no. But I'm wearing my shoes. Yes, they did. And I don't want to be mean, but... It got six million likes! Well then... Yes, they did. And I don't want to be mean. It got 6 million likes. Well then. You get the idea. This has to be the most cringe-worthy of all the episodes. The main antagonist of the episode is Aryan, also known as Pinky Starlight. I chose her because she left me a hate comment on one of my videos in 2019. The hypocrisy is that she said in her channel description that she is nice, yet she decided to leave that comment. Live action photos of my backyard were used for this episode. Instead of solid colors, I should have used real life pictures of locations in the show, something I would later do in a new Adventures of Ami and Javier Shore, which I started working on on Animaker and was never able to complete due to a duration limit for free users. More on that later. Before the contest started, two girls were seen taking the place of the host before running off, referring to themselves as Poppy Yumi Ami. They are parodies of Ami and Yumi in the animated series Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi, in turn based on the real life Ami Onuki and Yumi Yoshimura of the group Puffy Ami Yumi. The animated Ami and Yumi also make a brief cameo in Movie Mania, along with Ryan Kaji of the YouTube channel Ryan's World, as he appears in the TV show Ryan's Mystery Playday. These parodies of Ami and Yumi originally appeared in the first version of my movie, Omni Adenusi Powtoon Wars, which was titled Omni Adenusi the movie at the time. In the movie, the gang meets up with Drinky and Drunky in Video Game City, one of six locations that we would have to get past in order to fight Alex Minadaka and their psychic robo and stop her from achieving world domination. Hello, I am Drinky and I am Drunky. Together, we are Poppy Drinky Drunky. I'm sorry, but we don't need the help from Puffy Amiyumi imitations. Let's go now. Video Game City and Drinky and Junky make a brief reappearance in the final film. Video Game City? Hello. The Adventures of Omni and Javier was intended to have many references to Hi Hi Puffy Amiyumi. The third episode, Omni and Javier's Restaurant of Fun, originally had me and Javier trying to apply for a job at a new restaurant, only for it to already be taken by a teenager named Glenny Gloud. Guess who that is a parody of? So, we decided to get her fired by sabotaging the food, putting a bomb in a joyful meal, and blowing the place up. I'm not joking. In the final version, Javier and I turned an old restaurant into our own and created a commercial to attract customers, but provide horrible service. While working on this episode, I saw the first trailer for The Mitchells vs. The Machines, or Connected at the time, on March 5th, 2020. Yeah, I was two days late. So I added a frame from the movie onto one of the TVs at the restaurant as an easter egg. Production on this episode continued into the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Due to too many missing voiceovers, I did not re-upload this episode. Don't count on Powtoon, guys. 
In episode 4, Adventures in Babysitting, Javier and I babysit Emma, Justin, and their baby brother Cody. In the original version, my bike breaks after I crash into a car, we go to the restaurant, Justin blasts the music to drown out a show that Emma likes and he hates. They get fined $200 for noise violation. The siblings fight, causing destruction to the house. They apologize for everything and fix up the house. Emma tows my bike to a repair shop. Julie finds out about the ticket and they get in trouble. This was the first episode to begin production during the pandemic. So what are my thoughts on this episode now? It's pointless, because Emma and Justin can take care of themselves and Cody as the both of them are not toddlers. When I first conceived this episode in 2019, it was originally going to have me and Javier babysitting three rowdy children. Those children consisted of three kids in Powtoon's The Office character family, who would later be named Emma, Justin, and Joshua. This episode reveals that Emma cannot properly mix batter. Whenever she tried, she accidentally moved the mixing speed switch to its highest setting, splattering the batter everywhere. Honestly, you gotta be really, really stupid to not be able to mix batter properly even once. I mean, how can anyone screw something as simple as that up every single time? The Iverson house gets flooded by cupcake batter, a ripoff of a scene in the first episode of Shimmer and Shine. Ingredients are coming in too fast! There could have been a better, more original ending to Avengers and Babysitting than that. At one point, the TV is seen floating around in the batter, still working without being plugged in. Powtoon logic, I guess. Powtoon logic. We can do anything we think in your Powtoon. After the flood, we clean up the house and watch TV as Julie arrives back home from work. The flood ends when the batter plows a hole through the house and recedes in the backyard. That's gonna attract some ants. Perhaps I should have opened the back door instead. There's no way we would have been able to fix that giant hole by ourselves. The episode also used a cupcake tutorial video from another user, whom I did not credit at the end. This is also the case for the following episode, Social Mediocrity, where I used a tutorial on how to make video games. The Emoji Movie gave credit to the users behind every YouTube video featured in the movie and I didn't. Wonderful. There's also a fourth wall break where Justin whispers to the audience about the time Emma and Emily tried to change Cody's diaper resulting in a mess in the room, which he shouldn't even know about since he was out of the house at that time. Let's never speak of this. There's nothing stopping us now. In episode 5, Social Mediocrity, Javier and I create our own app game, which constantly receives negative feedback. The game, Omni and Javier, Twisty Turny Mayhem, suffered many problems, resulting in many negative reviews being posted on the game's page on the Powtoon App Store. After having enough, I deleted the game for good, but early the next morning, I watched the video game tutorial, so I showed it to Javier hours later and we set up a large group of people to remake the game for home consoles. The game received a much more positive response this time around. Apparently, in this episode, we didn't know that the production of a game involves many people until we watched that video. The second version of the game, which is much longer than the first version, should end up taking us 3 weeks, the same amount of time it took to make the first version to complete. It should have taken us at least a year. This episode marked the debut of Jennifer Henderson, my next door neighbor. In episode 6, Backyard Roller Coaster, we build a roller coaster in my backyard. Let me start off by saying that this is the cheapest looking episode of the show. The car seems to go off the track and the directions of its movements do not match parts of the roller coaster. I used Powtoon's A to B function to move the car in each scene and it cannot create curved lines, only straight lines. My backyard is also too small for there to be a roller coaster. Our failed attempts to make a good roller coaster resulted in property damage. At the end, the roller coaster is destroyed and we go to Berryland with Yonatan Ashad instead. Unfortunately for us, we find ourselves being faced by the people whose property we destroyed. This episode took a while to make due to the many A to B animations for the roller coaster car. A fake Berryland will be featured in episode 7, Normaline. 
In this episode, Justin discovers a mysterious portal to Berryland on the inside of his new cupboard. This episode is an obvious parody of the movie Coraline. In April 2019, after watching Coraline for the first time on Netflix, I plan to make an episode on my previous series, Super Mario the Series, called Total Line, which would have been my first attempt at parodying the movie. Unfortunately, I don't have any clips from Normaline because I decided to be a total idiot and delete it from Powtoon in April 2021 due to my hatred of Emma, Justin, Emily, Joshua, and Connor, all of whom I blamed for how cringy the show was. However, I do have a frame of the episode in a screenshot I took in 2020 as the thumbnail of the original upload of the episode. Michael buys Justin a cupboard and Justin plans to go see a new superhero movie called Heroes at Work, named after the Patoon character family of the same name with me and Javier. A portal appears in the cupboard and we enter it to find what appears to be Berryland. After a day of having fun there, Justin tells this woman named Normaline that he would come back tomorrow. The next day, Justin tries to show Emma that a portal to Berryland exists in his cupboard but when he opens it, nothing. After Emma leaves for Rolly Derby, the portal reappears. The park opened at a specific time, so when the clock struck that time, the portal reappeared, and we went back to Berryland. However, the rides start having issues and the popcorn machine explodes, so Justin consults Nora Line and she promises to have them fixed by tomorrow. The next day, upon arrival at Berryland for the third time, Justin is greeted by a dog who parodies the cat from Coraline. He tries to warn him about who Normal Knight really is, only to be interrupted by her. The dog was just a useless character who was only there to go along with the Coraline theme of the episode. The rides are in an even worse condition than before. They crash to the ground, and the popcorn machine creates an even bigger explosion that destroys the park. It is revealed that Justin's rival, Susie Campbell, had posed as a park manager, created a fake Berryland, and worsened the condition of the rides to try and kill Justin, which I think is way too far for someone her age. She chases us with a laser blaster, which really shouldn't even be in the hands of someone her age. The park starts to unravel, and we escape back to the Iverson family's house. We go to Pouting Theaters to see heroes at work, and Susie ends up falling into a puddle of mud, which she hates, in a barn. This episode marked the debut of Susie Campbell, who had a poor introduction to the series. She hates Justin because he won a Student of the Month award and teased her about it one time. She even went as far as destroying school property and getting Justin suspended for it. If I didn't cancel this show in December 2020, I would have made a half hour episode about how Susie got Justin suspended. At the end of the episode, Susie would get her comeuppance by getting herself suspended. The story of how she and Justin became enemies was never properly explored. I should have made an episode beforehand on how Susie and Justin met and grew to hate each other. That episode would give Susie a proper introduction, unlike Normaline. This episode also used the exact same roller coaster scene in Backyard Roller Coaster. Production lasted exactly a week from July 3rd to 10th, 2020. In episode 8, Cookie Mistake, Javier and I start a cookie business to raise money to buy a new game and the console it was released for. We see a commercial for the new Lauren the Sports Girl game, Get Pumped. This episode fortunately doesn't suffer as many problems as other episodes. Emma and Justin are not present and nothing cringy goes on. Moving on to... Oh god, episode 9, Jennifer's film career. In this episode, it is revealed that Jennifer was formerly a movie star. She works with me and Javier to send a copy of one of her films, The Warfare, to the director of an upcoming film called The Omnis, which she believes she would be perfect for. This is the dumbest episode of the show, no doubt about it. Stuff that doesn't make sense, the movie that Jennifer wanted to be in took just 6 months to be released after she signed up for it plot holes, etc. Here are some flaws I found in the episode. Jennifer wears her normal clothes in the movie, though this is excusable as any character created by Powtoon themselves cannot have their outfits changed. It's impossible for the DVD to have been in perfect condition in Jennifer's drone after it blew up. There's no explanation as to how the DVDs for Adventures at Bay and the Warfare got mixed up. The disc did not survive the fall onto the street, yet it survived the drone explosion. And worst of all, Jennifer saw her own movie in theaters. Who the hell does that? The ending should have had Jennifer's friend Catalina taking me and Javier to the movie theater instead. And do you know how the director recognized Jennifer? He went home, went to Toonflix, and streamed the movie that we had been trying to send him the whole damn episode. This inadvertently sends the message that streaming is better than physical media. <laughs> Not in my eyes it ain't.
Moving on, episode 10, The Crush. With help from Emma, me, and Javier, Justin tries to get over his crush on the new girl in his class, Suzanne Erickson. You can already tell by the premise that this episode is the first to feature, well, Suzanne, Justin's girlfriend. Again, I barely have any clips of this episode thanks to me being a dumbass. This is yet another cringy episode. There are scenes where Justin follows Suzanne with a heart hovering over his head while still waving to the audience as usual. Not only that, but the crush ripped off the Maya and Miguel episode, Crushed. And yes, we still have a test next week. Now please open your books. Both episodes have a character working hard on a test in the class with the reward being an activity with their crush. They get the highest score and right after they start cheering they get exposed over their crush on someone and run out of the class. There's also a scene where Justin nearly gets hit in the face by a basketball, similar to Miguel getting hit by a ball and crushed. Blatant copying, I know. Susie decides to expose Justin's crush on Suzanne to everyone at the school by delivering a speech over the intercom. I may not have much from this episode, but I do remember what Susie said, so I retyped it on the text-to-speech website I got her voice from. Here it is. This is a message to Suzanne Erickson. There's someone behind your back that has a crush on you. I don't think you know, but I definitely do. He has a orange hair and he has a red shirt, and he always prevents you from getting messy or hurt. He developed a crush on you the second you went into action, and his love for you is also a big distraction. He's an 8 year old boy who's perfect for Bustin, and I know what his name is. His name is Justin. And just to be clear, his last name is Iverson. That's all. And goodbye. Plot twist, Suzanne actually knew that Justin had a crush on her all along since she noticed him staring at her when she entered the class for the first time and he prevented her from getting hurt and dirty. In fact, she had a crush on him as well. She gave the class a test with the reward being pizza with her and the principal because she knew he would get the highest score. While having pizza in the cafeteria, Justin explains to Suzanne who Susie is and why she decided to embarrass him. Frustrated that her plan failed, Susie lashes out at the two before leaving, and Justin and Suzanne laugh. What the heck, my plan didn't work? I am so angry right now, I could just... just... Ugh, I'm so out of here. The room that Justin hides in was based on a room I was taken into in 2015 during the second semester of the school year when I got in trouble. This episode had the shortest production time of any episode of the show, taking only four days to complete. Moving on to episode 11, Spookyville. On Halloween, Javier and I attempt to scare a man in order to get the world's rarest candy, Super Sour Cherry Banana Blitz, from him. This episode has references to a creepy flash game called Black Licorice, which was on Nick.com back in the day. There was a scene where a woman gives Emma and Justin candy and Suzanne a black licorice straw. Emma and Justin say thank you as they receive their treats and Suzanne scares the woman saying, I don't like black licorice in a menacing way. On the verge of giving up, I spot a journal belonging to the man and read it. I read about how the man got traumatized by a scary Halloween game online back in 2008 and developed the fear of black licorice straws. Yeah guys, it's as stupid as it sounds. I also briefly read a review on an episode of Tween Girl in the Monster World. If I still worked on this show, I would have renamed that show to Monstopia. Tween Girl in a whatever is just too long. We then use his greatest fear against him, leaving black licorice in his house. The man then turns on the TV to an episode of a show called Candomania, with the subject being black licorice, before quickly changing it to an airing of a movie called Mangled, starring Jennifer, whose sobbing voices I provided. Guess what movie that is a parody of? Suzanne shows up wearing her Halloween costume. The man gives candy to her and then she scares him by bursting open the door with black licorice flying in different directions. Another reference to the black licorice game. At this point, the man was scared stiff. We take the candy and we learn from Emma and Justin how the ones with golden wrappers are extremely rare and can win people a trip to Las Vegas. Moving on to episode 12, Poppin' Clock. Javier and I travel through time in a time machine we found buried outside the Iversons' house. Julie shows us, Emma, and Justin a video she recorded in the 1980s. In the video, Julie shares her hopes that if she had children, they would be very well behaved. And were they? 
Well, of course, not all the time. There are flashbacks to Emma, Justin, and their friends shooting water guns at each other inside someone's house. Justin teasing Emma, making her furious to the point where her skin turns red and she fights Justin, and Emma fighting Justin for her new tablet bag after seeing him with it, fearing that he would break it. Ironically, she accidentally throws her tablet into the air and breaks it. Hey, what are you doing with my new tablet? Give it back before you wreck it. What is wrong with you? I use your tablet for a second, and you have a heart attack? The video made us want to know more about life in the 80s. I tripped over a time machine, which was not fully buried. We go 10 years into the future. In this time period, Emma is 23, Cody is 11, Justin and Suzanne are 18 at Palan University, and all of them are now Peanutize Me characters. Justin and Suzanne plan to go to Daniel's Arcade and Food Fun, named after Powtoon co-founder Daniel Satrinsky, to celebrate their 10th anniversary. We go to the past to meet young Julie, we go to the future to see a movie we've been excited about, and we find ourselves in the fake Barry land as seen in Normal Line. The time machine goes out of control, taking us to random time periods, including one wherein Justin and Suzanne's wedding takes place. This episode once again continues the show's lack of originality. How? Because after we arrived back in the present, we discovered that our actions in the past and future altered the present and ripped a hole in the space-time continuum. This ripped off the climax of Mr. Peabody and Sherman. After undoing our actions, everything is back to normal, the machine explodes, and the Iversons go to our restaurant for some pizza. There was no explanation as to how the time machine got buried right outside Emma and Justin's house. It just is. The go, stop, past, and future buttons on the time machine controller are based on the A, B, X, and Y buttons on the GameCube controller. The yellow buttons read present day, day, month, and year. And finally, episode 13, Game Hall. The Game Hall truck arrives at school and Javier and I become attached to it. This episode was based on the day the game truck came to my school in May 2018. I remember sitting with Javier during breakfast that day. The episode starts with the extraordinary sitting in the cafeteria waiting excitedly for the Game Hall truck. It's here. Sorry guys, game hall time is at 9.30. At 9.30, it was time for us to go into the truck and have a fun time. Javier and I enjoyed the truck so much that we refused to leave. Our teacher, Lizzie Gutierrez, whose name isn't mentioned in the episode, leaves the class to go look for us and we hide inside the couch to prevent the game hall truck driver and our teacher from seeing us. After giving up, Miss Gutierrez decides to call the principal, so we finally leave the truck and admit to our teacher that we didn't want to leave the truck. As we go back to class, Emily gives me a game hall card containing the company's phone number. The principal tells us to meet her in her office at 3, and we do so frantically. She tells us that she will be bringing the game hall truck back tomorrow because of how much we liked it and wanted to stay in it. After another day in the game hall truck, Justin is revealed to have become obsessed with the truck as well when Emma drags Justin away by the legs. Game Hall was the last episode of the show to air. By November 13th, 2020, episode 14, The Hotel, had been completed, but it never saw the light of day in its entirety. The Adventures of Omni and Javier was initially produced simultaneously with my movie, Omni Adenusi Powtoon Wars. In 2019, I took a break from the show in favor of Powtoon Wars, and in February 2020, I took a break from working on the movie for nearly the rest of the year to work on The Adventures of Omni and Javier. Once the show ended that December, production on Powtoon Wars resumed. On August 11, 2019, the intro was uploaded to YouTube and I announced that the show would premiere on November 23, 2019. That day, I exported the show's first episode through Clipchamp. It was my first time using that video editor and it became my main editor for my YouTube videos. In September 2019, I created a wiki for the show on fandom. It was later closed in March 2021. On November 12, 2019, just 11 days before the show's premiere, it was delayed in favor of the production of Omni Adenusi Powtoon Wars, which was later delayed to July 9, 2021 and again to May 27, 2022 due to major revamping. On March 12, 2020, 
I announced the new premiere date, July 4th, 2020. At the time of the show's premiere, only six episodes had been completed, with the seventh episode in production. While I worked on the show, I would talk to Javier through Google Slides, letting him know about the production status of each episode. The majority of the show was produced during the COVID-19 pandemic. During my summer break of 2020, and while I did my distance learning, I worked on the show. On October 7, 2020, the show was renewed for a second season consisting of 26 episodes, half of the amount of episodes that the first season was supposed to have. In addition to the episodes, three shorts were produced. The first one was a Kids' Choice Awards short where Javier and I win a Nickelodeon blimp, but are unsure of why we did. This was made on March 14, 2020, before I found out that Nickelodeon had postponed the year's Kids' Choice Awards ceremony due to the pandemic. It was released online on March 31st, 2020, ahead of the premiere of the show. The second short is The Video Chat Zone, where me and my friends talk about our daily lives through a video chat. This premiered on October 22nd, 2020 and was created in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, in which communicating with others through video chat websites such as Zoom became very common. I temporarily halted production on Game Hall to work on the short. The scene where Emma brings up the time she got laughed at after spilling milk on her pants because they thought that she, you know, references a scene from one of the Dork Diaries books. I think it was the first one, correct me if I'm wrong. Those kids were really milking their laughter. Ha 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 ha. Get it? The third and final short, Black Friday, has the Iversons rushing to the Poutonville supermarket during Black Friday shopping. Work on this short commenced on November 24th, 2020, while I was watching The Croods on Netflix to prepare for the sequel, The Croods A New Age. A running gag in this short is Suzanne getting run over by someone, first by Justin, then by Craig Pokoli, who appeared in the unaired episode The Hotel, and then for a third time by Justin again. Notably, this is the last piece of Adventures of Omni and Javier Media to be completed. It was dumb how Emma got a dollhouse since she's 13, too old for that kind of thing. She could have gotten something better. Also, there was no reason for all of Emma and Justin's friends to come along with them to the repair shop. An excessive amount of people in one vehicle if you ask me. Anyway, on November 13th, 2020, I completed the hotel. In this episode, the Iversons stay at a hotel for three days. Emma and Justin sneak to the hotel's arcade behind their parents' backs while keeping track of how long until they would return. They ask two people to take their places for them, but then they accidentally reveal their true selves to Julie and Michael. That night, I began working on episode 15, Sleepover and Under, after coming home from Yogurtland. In this episode, Emma and Ruby have a slumber party at Emily's house, and Justin hangs out with his friends. Emma is noticeably out of character here as she is greedier and clumsier. She eats all the party food and does not think before doing anything. Normaline is referenced at one point where Justin makes a video hoping that it would blow up online. In the video, Justin and his friends enter a portal in his cupboard, taking them to a realm of deleted Powtoons, and they leave as it starts to fall apart. The episode was left unfinished. There was a string of episodes that ended up being unproduced, including A Christmas Tale, A Lone Ranger, Broken Arm, Emma's Birthday Bash, Misadventures in Babysitting, Swapping Bodies, and the one I was looking forward to making the most, Glitcheroo. After watching the Amazing World of Gumball episode The Signal on October 27, 2020, it inspired me to start developing an episode called Glitcheroo. What did it where Poutonville starts glitching out after Susie tampers with the heart of the town. There will be a cartridge that controls Poutonville. If its contacts get dirty, the town would glitch out. Javier and I would talk about how the episode would play out. A scene from the episode was shown in the hotel, where a fortune teller shows Emma and Justin what would happen in the future on a TV. Justin does not believe this prediction to be correct and would have been proven wrong when Glitcheroo takes place. Glitches would show scenes from all previous episodes and even scenes from Cartoon Network shows. The glitches would lead to many unfortunate occurrences like everyone speaking a different language, me unintentionally offending Javier, and Suzanne being teleported to the mall naked. 
The glitches would even show scenes from Pouting Wars, which had yet to be released, and the real life me and Javier doing weird things. After Suzanne ends up nude in public, she would hide before anyone would see her. Anyone except me and Javier. We are the only ones who see Suzanne naked, and when we do, we would scream, What the what? So loud with our real life voices that we explode, complete with ear ringing and a Cartoon Network technical difficulty screen. This would have been a reference to the gumball episode, The Lady. <gasps> what the what? Glitchy Room would have been the most comedic episode of the show and would have held the record for the most pop culture references in an episode of the show. Unfortunately, it wouldn't come into fruition. On October 23rd, 2020, a UTTP account started cyberbullying me by making videos out of me, and by December, the show's days were numbered. In 2020, many troll accounts came to YouTube and cyberbullied people, including me and Javier. On October 23rd, a user named Ethan Walker sent me a link to the video that one of the troll accounts uploaded out of me. That night, the account was terminated. Three days later, another account joined YouTube and made another video out of me and quickly got terminated on the 30th. Yet another account was created on November 2nd and not only did he once again make videos out of me, but he also stole videos from other users, including a video from Javier Corona Lopez's old channel, which he took down. He made all his videos private a week later before returning to make even more videos out of me on the 25th. The person under this was a guy going by the name of Andy. The main reason why he was so against me was because of my show. On December 1st, I asked him why he was doing this to me and he replied it was because of how cringy and poorly animated the show was. He wasn't wrong. There were a lot of cringeworthy scenes in the show, especially with Emma, Justin, and their friends. Just look at that face! <laughs> You know what that reminds me of? Because they were made for presentations and nothing more, they just stare and wave at the audience almost any time they're on screen. Let's not forget the scene in the second episode where Aryan talks about Baldi. This show also suffered from poor animation. Because many backgrounds were just solid colors, it made them look dull and lifeless. Not to mention, a lot of Powtoon characters, especially those in the Office family, have no walking or running animation, so they just slide around. Like I said before, real life pictures of locations would have been used more frequently in Season 2. I would have still used animated backgrounds, but those would have had more detail instead of being simple solid colors. A lot of objects in the show were just simple shapes, like the popcorn boxes and the coat in episode 1, the mixer in episode 4, the roller coaster tracks in episode 6, and Mr. Boyd's package in episode 9. I was left with the decision to either ignore him and continue the show, or cancel it. I went with the former. December 1st came the first step in the cancellation of the show. Having enough of the user, I made every episode of the show private temporarily. Despite that, I continued to work on Sleepover and Under. Javier realized this and left me a comment about it. On December 15th, the show was finally cancelled. 13 episodes and 3 shorts had aired up to that point and they were all left private permanently. Six days later, I began working on a brand new short under my newly formed company Omni Sprout Animation Studios called Movie Ticket Madness. It was inspired by Ethan Walker's Mr. A. Crazy's Ice Cream Chase short. In Movie Ticket Madness, Javier, Jonathan, Glitter, and I get tickets to the new superhero movie Heroes at Work, much like the movie mentioned in Normaline. The tickets get blown away by strong winds and we try to catch them. The tickets are then caught and ripped up by Viley Anderson and we chase her as well. When making this short, I tried to distance it from the adventures of Omni and Javier by not including any characters from the show aside from me, Javier, Jonathan, Glitter, Joseph, and Ruby. Craig Pokely's sister Jessie Pokely, who appeared in the hotel, appears in this short. Although this short is separate from the show, it does have a few references. The three kids that Javier bumps into have the voices of Emma, Justin, and Suzanne, respectively. <coughs> Ruby says to her brother, I don't know who the heck is an Emma Iverson, but she sounds like one of those people who just stare and wave at viewers that were kicked out of the town last month. Yep, this short made fun of Emma Iverson and other characters in her character family. 
After the cancellation of the show, I started blaming those characters, and only them, for how cringy the show was. I developed a hatred for Emma, Justin, and their other soul-staring, hand-waving friends. It got to the point where I deleted almost every episode featuring them from Powtoon in April 2021, a decision that I now highly regret. I did not care about that as much because the episodes were still private to me on my YouTube channel, but on September 23rd, 2021, my channel was deleted due to me being marked under 18 by my school administrator. The same thing happened to Javier and Jonathan Ashad. I started to wonder what the hell I was thinking. Had I been more sensible at age 13, I would have moved on from the situation I faced in late 2020 and kept the episodes. I also highly regret not using Google Takeout to save all of my videos before my channel vanished for good. You know what I have also could have done? Saving every episode of the show to my Google Drive! I made a big ass mistake not even thinking of doing that probably because I didn't even know how it worked at the time. I don't think I ever went to that website and saved the file directly on there in 2020. Literally every file saved to my drive that year was done through different Google software or by different people. In March 2021, I started planning to revive the adventures of Omni and Javier, but under one condition. Emma, Justin, Emily, Joshua, and Connor would no longer appear and would be reduced to off-screen mentions. They were the things about the show that I blamed the most for how poor in quality it was. The other Office characters would have reduced screen time. After 7 months, I began working on the show's revival episode, Laurinators, which also would have been the start of the second season. In this episode, Javier and I go to the mall to get our Lauren the Sports Girl book signed by Lauren Lawrence herself. Lauren is a parody of Lynn Loud from The Loud House. At the time I created the character, I had an intense hatred for the show. Most characters in the previous season returned, including Ruby, Suzanne, Julie, Michael, Cody, Jennifer, and Susie. Of course, the characters I removed from the show are not present, but Emma, Justin, and Emily are mentioned. All five of the removed characters were to be replaced by new characters. Emma would have been replaced by a girl named Sally McCallie who bears a resemblance to Emma, and Justin would have been replaced by Jake McCallie. As the revival episode, it had numerous references to previous episodes. The song Happier by Marshmallow played, making it the second episode to do so after Movie Mania. Other references include a frame from Powtoon Wars being displayed on my computer, scenes from the rating contest, adventures in babysitting, popping clock, and the old version of Powtoon Wars playing on my phone, a scene from Backyard Roller Coaster playing on the TV at the mall, and scenes where Javier rides into my house and climbs up my stairs, which references the opening scene of Movie Mania. The video I used for when Javier goes upstairs alludes to the video I used in the first episode when Javier and I go upstairs in my house to talk about his plan to get into Walmart. The episode also had a reference to my second short film, Time Stoppers, when I used a time controlling remote to speed up time so that we could get our Lauren book signed faster. Unfortunately for us, we would end up time traveling to many different dates in the past and future, similar to Pop and Clock. Production was going along smoothly until Powtoon gave us their worst update yet. As of October 27, 2021, the ability to add voiceovers to slides is now exclusive to Pro Plus users and above. This new update angered me, prevented me from easily making any more progress on Lorinators, and led to my consideration of retiring from Powtoon. After all of those great updates, they just had to do this for some reason. Powtoon Wars was still in production at the time, and this update did not deter me from finishing the movie. The movie was finished and released on May 27, 2022. I left Powtoon on September 9th, though I continued to view my videos on Powtoon without editing anything. The day before, on September 8th, many elements, including all of the Office characters, were restricted to higher tier users, cementing Powtoon as a website not worthy of supporting in my opinion. Though a glitch on the website allowed free users to export videos with Pro and Pro Plus elements in them, which I found out about in November 2020 while working on the hotel. Powtoon fixed that glitch later on and now I couldn't export videos that use these kinds of elements, so I quit the website for good. I don't see any reason for me to continue supporting this website if this is what they've sunken into. Currently, I can't log back into Powtoon because it became one of so many websites that my horrible school admin blocked but I couldn't care less. 
A few days before leaving Powtoon, I decided to re-upload 5 episodes of the show from August 30th to September 8th. Movie Mania, Social Mediocrity, Backyard Roller Coaster, Cooking Mistake, and Jennifer's Film Career. I uploaded a clip from the hotel on October 27th, the incomplete Lorinators that same day, the incomplete Sleepover and Under on July 4th, 2023, the third anniversary of the show, and the entirety of Adventures in Babysitting on March 17th, 2024. I found files of the episode in my desktop computer's recycle bin that day and decided to put them all together to recreate it. And of course, Every episode of the show that I have re-uploaded has also been saved to my Google Drive this time. On June 28, 2023, I started working on a new Adventures of Omni and Javier short on a different animation website, Animaker. It was about the aftermath of the conversion of Powtoonville to a different animation website. It ended up being another unfinished Adventures of Omni and Javier project due to a duration limit for free users. Here is the short. My brain is going to become a blizzard when I eat this. Look out. What? What happened? Huh. Last thing I remember was me and Javier going to the mall to get our Lauren Brooks signed and seeing Transforming Red to celebrate our victory. I can't remember what happened after that. Hey, Javier. Hey, Nini. Nee -nee. Before I get onto what just happened recently, what was your favorite part of Transforming Red? I think one of them has to be the scene where Faye, Faye works at her mother to get her into the circle. Also, the part where Faye looks down through her legs while doing so is comedy gold. Aha. For me, it has to be Travis's birthday party and the scene where Faye says a wooga at the sight of Damon. One of the movie's many meme potential scenes. Man, I feel sorry for the universe that got this movie on Disney Plus instead of movie theaters. This short takes place after Lorinators. I wake up to find myself on the floor of my bedroom, now in live action again, with no memory of what happened after we went to the mall. Javier and I talk about what we liked about Transforming Red, the movie we saw after we got our Lauren book signed. Transforming Red is a parody of Turning Red, and I think a better name for that parody would have been Turning Rouge. Faye was actually the original name for the protagonist of Turning Red, Maylin Lee, or May. All three scenes in Transforming Red that we talk about are based on scenes in Turning Red. Also... Man, I feel sorry for the universe that got this movie on Disney Plus instead of movie theaters. <laughs> Then, we would get into our experiences with the conversion. After watching an episode of Maya and Miguel at 11am, I spent the rest of the day working on this short only to find out that it exceeded the 2 minute duration limit for free users. I hate paywalls. If only Powtoon had never become so stupid. <gasps> I looked for ways to revive the show until I eventually gave up and moved on. I also created this little video inspired by a scene in the Spongebob episode Friendiversary where Spongebob finally remembers Squidward. This is my favorite episode of season 13, and it was just really cool to see the many frames from previous episodes flicker through Spongebob's eyes. I made another video like this featuring frames from Disney animation films, which I created on Disney's 100th anniversary and took me a lot of time to make that day. It's just not ringing up. Portions of that video can be seen in the 5th 20th century Spongebob video I made. Overall, I had fun working on this show. 
It may not have lasted long or had the best quality, but it was great bringing my ideas for episodes to life. I also really enjoyed working on the show during the pandemic in the second half of 2020. In the past, I've made some really cringy videos like... I saw it in theaters. You mad? <laughs> and... Now that I have the coins from those dummies, I am not powerful. And... And some episodes of The Adventures of Omni and Javier are no different. I was a complete dumbass at age 13, begging Sony for a second Mitchells vs. The Machines trailer when there was little to no possibility that it would come out in 2020 due to you know what, raging in all caps with many exclamation marks added, and not thinking before deleting episodes. Five episodes of the show ended up being lost media. The best thing to do to bring back these episodes would be for me to recreate them with all of the voiceovers intact, but unfortunately I can't do that now. I may not be able to find some way to revive the show, at least for now, but I still like to watch the surviving episodes to remember the times I had working on the show. That's it for this video. The script for this video took me days to write, probably the longest script for any video I've ever made. This video took me a long time to edit, and the stupidity of my video editor and the summer heat were no help. This was me going through the entire history of the adventures of Omni and Javier, from its rise to its fall. You can watch the surviving episodes on my channel, and you can also check out the show's page on my unpopular wiki. Link to that page is in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. I hope this is not another black licorice straw. Yep. I said in it if I had kids, they would be as sweet as lollipops. And I was right. I also thought you would behave very well, but my prediction was actually wrong. Are they in here? All I wanted to do was to have a nice sleepover without anything bad happening. But due to your clumsiness and greediness, you've ate all the cookies, burned all the pillows, destroyed my radio, ripped one of my sleeping bags, and ate all the burgers. You've really got on my nerves tonight, and I want you to do me a favor and get out of my house, and don't come back until you've learned how to not be such a screw-up. Ugh, I don't know why I befriended such a nuisance. Damn!